Um, thanks, everyone. Uh, I'm Hannah, and I'm presenting this joint work with uh, Ivan Dumgard, Bull Nelson, Claudia Orlandi, and Rasmus Pei. I will start off. Can I move to the next slide? Here, with some brief motivation for combinations of differential privacy or DP and secure multi party computation or MPC, which this paper deals with. Both of both DP and MPC offer nice ways of guaranteeing privacy during data analysis, but they offer different guarantees that complement each other nicely. MPC allows us to compute functions on private input values held by multiple individuals without requiring those individuals to share their private input values with any other trusted party, while differential privacy allows us to compute functions and release those function outputs without revealing too much individual information about the input values. Both MPC and DP can be used in a wide range of data analysis with applications in machine learning and beyond. And specifically in this talk, I'll be focusing on the selection problem, which is that given n d-dimensional binary vectors, we'd like to output the argmax of the sum of those vectors. Examples where this is relevant in practice include things like recommendation of a popular item on a web shop based on user feedback, computing statistics on popular sites on the internet, or in a machine learning context, hyperparameter tuning and feature selection. Here we can, oh, okay. Um, I think it's missing a slide or some text, but I'll just briefly say. Um, the main contributions then of this paper is to provide a protocol for distributed differentially private selection that scales to a large number of users that uses three or more servers or parties in MPC to compute this in a differentially private way using an assumption of an honest majority and semi-honest security. And it does all of this with very limited uh, communication in the noise generation process. So to understand exactly what that means, I'll take a step back and introduce differential privacy and MPC a bit more formally. Differential privacy, again, guarantees that we can release summary statistics about a data set without revealing too much about any individual. Here, for example, let's say we have two neighboring data sets that differ in the presence of one individual. We might want to count, we might want to compute some function, like, for example, counting the number of individuals with some feature value B here, but instead of outputting the true value, zero or one in this case, we add some noise. Here we're sampling noise from a Gaussian distribution. So now instead we're revealing a sample from the distribution on the left or the distribution on the right. To compute exactly what type of a guarantee this gives us, we need to specify the function that's being computed as well as the privacy parameters, epsilon and delta, where you can think of epsilon as some privacy loss and delta with the probability that that privacy loss is exceeded. We also need to specify the sensitivity of the function, which is the maximum impact that one individual can have on the function output. In the case of these types of counting functions, that's just one. To guarantee differential privacy, mechanisms often compute the function and then add some noise, in this case from the Gaussian distribution with a variance that depends on the privacy parameters and the sensitivity. And then formally, this gives us the guarantee that the probability that the mechanism outputs some value on some data set D is to be very similar as the probability that that same value is output by the mechanism on a neighboring data set, where here similar is quantified by this multiplicative factor e to the epsilon and additive factor delta. This definition is usually implemented in the central model of differential privacy, where we trust some central aggregator to collect the input values from individuals, compute the mechanism output, and reveal that. However, if we don't have a trusted aggregator, the local model gives us a nice alternative where now individuals add noise locally to their values before forwarding that on to an untrusted aggregator to compute the function. Both of these have advantages and disadvantages. While the central model relies on this assumption of a trusted aggregator, it allow allows this aggregator to add the right amount of noise that's necessary for differential privacy, giving a good privacy utility trade-off. And in local differential privacy, while we don't rely on the assumption of a trusted aggregator. This means that individuals need to add much more noise locally, which might degrade utility in some cases. This motivates the need for intermediate models of differential privacy, like this one here, which is the multi-central model. Now we are distributing trust among a group of or collection of servers without needing to trust any one ser server or central aggregator. This collection then jointly computes a function in some differentially private way, where we now just need to assume that at least one of these servers is 
trustworthy or honest, but not necessarily which one. So we can, as you can imagine, implement this using MPC. A little bit more formally, we can allow the individuals to split their private input values into smaller pieces or secret shares and distribute those among these servers where the individual secret shares reveal nothing about the secret value. We assume that up to T of these servers could be corrupted by some adversary. And in this scenario specifically, we're working with an honest majority. So we assume that T needs to be less than half the servers. We also operate with semi-honest security, which means we assume that the servers follow the protocol specification. MPC then allows us to compute a function, in this case the mechanism, guaranteeing two properties, correctness and privacy, where correctness means we're computing the correct function output and privacy means we, um, that nothing beyond the function output is revealed. Our contribution then is this differentially private and distributed selection protocol that gives utility on par with the best mechanisms in the central model of differential privacy that scales to large data sets with high dimensions and uses three or more servers using an integer secret sharing scheme to give differential privacy for an honest majority. Before going into the details of how this can be implemented as a cryptographic protocol, I'll first give a high level overview of the ideal functionality, or you can think of this as the mechanism or algorithm we're using. In the first step, we'd like to aggregate these binary input vectors. So the result of this would be a d-dimensional vector with values between zero and n. On the slide here, we have eight dimensions and each bar in the plot represents the sum of these binary values for that dimension. Before doing any comparisons or computing the argmax, we will add noise. In this case, this is done according to the compute noisy max um, differential privacy approach. And here in this case, we're adding noise sampled from a geometric distribution while also allowing for some additional noise, which will later allow us to formulate more efficient MPC protocols. Because comparing these larger noisy sums is computationally expensive in MPC, we also add an additional step here uh, which is a truncation step in which we're essentially snapping these noisy sum values to some more discrete steps here visualized by those horizontal lines in the plot. This also introduces a bit of extra error, um, but this also allows us to implement the MPC protocols more efficiently. Finally, we can perform the argmax computation using comparisons with a tree-like structure in every step comparing two of the candidate maximum values. So first we eliminate these, then these, until we have the final output, which in this example is one. Now that I've described the high level algorithm, I can go into some details of the protocol, which like I mentioned earlier, uses integer secret sharing. Here the shares are integers and the sum of those integers should reconstruct the secret in a way that neither of the secret shares reveals anything about the secret. The individuals will secret share their values to some of the servers where here we distinguish between computing and supporting servers. Just over half the servers will be computing servers and the rest will be supporting servers. So in the case of three servers here, that's two computing and one supporting server. Individuals secret share their input values to the computing servers, after which they're no longer relevant to the protocol. So this is all the communication that's necessary from them. Now the servers collaborate to sample noise. In this case, they're each sampling noise locally from a negative binomial distribution, which is a nice distribution because multiple samples from properly chosen negative binomial distributions form a sample from a geometric distribution, which we can show gives privacy. And in this case, the parameters of that negative binomial distribution will depend on the number of honest servers. So here, since we're assuming that two servers must be honest, the noise intuitively from those two servers needs to add up uh, to a sample from the geometric distribution that we need. And the third server's noise is essentially extra, but because we allow for this extra noise, we avoid the communication that would be necessary to sample from a geometric distribution in MPC, which is very inefficient. So next, the supporting servers send their secret shares of their noise to the computing servers. And now at that point, those computing servers can add the shares that they just received of the noise, the shares they received in the first step of the input values and the noise they sampled themselves. 
After this, we add the truncation step where the computing servers truncate locally the lowest order bits from that sum. This is slightly different from truncating the sum of the input values and the noise samples because we introduce some error by doing this locally instead of engaging in some communication, um, high communication protocol, but uh, it, the error is small. Next, we convert these shares to shares modulo some power of two, which is just a slightly different format from the integer secret shares. And we do this for the final step of the protocol where we use existing state of the art argmax and comparison protocols to compute the result. This is the most communication intensive part of the protocol, so it's also what we benchmark in our evaluation of MPC here. Here we're using the MP speeds framework and three AWS instances in the same region. Here I'm reporting the communication and time while varying the number of bits remaining after truncation R, uh, which here are each of these individual lines. And we see that truncating more bits, like when we truncate until five or 10 bits remain in the blue and green lines, uh, is more communication efficient and faster. We can also see that the uh, communication and time scales linearly with the number of dimensions. And finally, a few words on the utility results. These are comparisons using benchmarking data sets for selection with about 4,000 data points, and we're reporting the error as the difference between the true maximum and the value at the index reported by our mechanism. To compare to the uh, previous slide, you can look at the blue box and see what the time and communication requirements are when rounding until only five bits remain, or without rounding, which uh, is, requires more time and communication, and we can also compare to other mechanisms, both in the central model, that would be the exponential mechanism and permute and flip with weaker trust assumptions, or stronger trust assumptions, and the local model with weaker trust assumptions like randomized response, which has a line um, kind of on top right underneath random choice, so that gives us very low utility. We can see that truncating all but five bits, which is the brown line with the diamond shape markers, gives very similar utility to the mechanisms in the central model. Finally, to conclude, our contributions were this protocol that scales to a large number of high dimensional inputs, guarantees DP in, as an exploration of this multi-central model using three or more servers and tolerating an honest majority of semi-honest corruption. And through these local computations, we introduce very limited communication for noise generation. As just to mention one possible future direction, this exploration of the multi-central model is very interesting, so I'm sure there are more types of function classes or security assumptions that could be taken a look at. Thank you. Feel free to take a look at the paper, ask me any questions now or also during my poster session this afternoon.